And it's probably in the high 40s Fahrenheit right now. We're going to do an oxalic treatment on these hives. Um, this is about the time to start the oxalic treatments. I checked them um, November 21st, about 10 or 11 days ago, and they still had, uh, the stronger hives still had two or three patches of uh, capped brood about that big. So I decided to hold off another 10 days, wait for the 1st of December to treat them, hoping that that last bit of cat brood would hatch out. What do you see with your it's eyes? It's almost identical. Yeah. I'd say nine out of 10 of our colonies are now broodless. You know, 10 days ago, they would have had a little bit of sealed brood left mm -hmm. over. Um, there's still a couple queens that are still laying just a little, mm -hmm. maybe a few dozen eggs, almost nothing. It seems like there's some colonies that never do just go 100% Right, broodless. right, I think that's the case. And maybe that's also why, uh, we're better off treating more than once, even yeah, how even many in times December. Are you do it in this winter. Last year, I treated them all twice in December. I know you did it three times. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm thinking about doing. I'm for sure going to do it at least the two times, uh, and maybe maybe the third. Again, I think we're operating on that same theory, which I came and told you about several years ago, and we both do that. If you're getting, I think. With one treatment, they say that you get as high as 93 to 95% kill, but other people have said, eh, maybe that's a little high, maybe it's more like 90%. So if you're getting a 90% kill by only treating them once, then you can obviously, you can bump the kill up to 98 or 99% by treating them twice. Yeah. If you, if you kill 90% each time, then you treat them twice. I'd much rather have a 98 or 99% yeah. kill than a 90% kill. So yeah. that's kind well, of... Ours came out of winter extremely clean last year. Cleanest I've ever seen. Right. Um, so, and I, and your, well, we talked a little bit yesterday about your temperatures. You try to stay uh, right around 45 to 55. So Right around, there. yeah. But even so, yesterday it got up in the high 50s and you know how it is when you have stuff to do and i was even treating some that were flying yeah. uh, even in the higher 50s they were flying but really this time of year they're not flying to go gather pollen so so really even if you see some flying in and out of the hive it's usually just 10 or 15 bees it's yeah. not a significant number because even when you put the you, when we put the sock over the entrance after after treating them uh, I was not seeing that, even at 60 degrees, I was not seeing that many bees that had flown out and come back. And really, you know, between 50 and 60, the cluster is going to be even looser than it is below 50. So anywhere in that range, you know, you're treating them. And also if you're treating them more than once. So I didn't worry about it too much. So uh, in terms of the dosage, the, the label dose is for basically a two box hive like this, the label dose would be uh, half a teaspoon or, or two grams for two boxes. Is that, that's right? Yeah, that's what the label says. Yeah. Right. And then recent, you know, you, you've told me some and I've been reading some too. Uh, recent research seems to suggest that our that label dose is a little too small, is that right? Every research project that I'm aware of is saying that. I think over at the University of Georgia, they're working on trying to get a label that says at least two grams, perhaps three. Uh, Cameron Jack down there in Florida has showed that even four is not really too much. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Berry, she's of the opinion that they'd never get a okay for four grams, but she's hoping two and a half or three will work. Right, right. And we're actually right now shooting for at least two grams per box mm -hmm. and did last year and it, it seemed to work very well. Right. I see absolutely zero issues with it. All the researchers are saying the same thing. So I know we're not supposed to talk about off-label, but I think the general consensus at this point is that uh, two grams per box is a good way to go. And in some cases, some people are doing more. Right. So I'm, I'm going for two. Two gram and using these devices, two grams per box would be one full teaspoon. So that's what this is. This is a full teaspoon. Uh, and so it does look like a, bi a bigger dose than the dose yeah. we were using in the past, which was only half a teaspoon for two boxes. Yeah. So that's that. All right. Well, let's go fire up the generator.
Old sock. Sock. I like it. They work. To go, go go into the variety store and get a bunch of hundred socks real cheap. <laughs> I like them. They're pretty simple. If you cut them in half like that, they're just about the right length. And the other thing was, I I really didn't want to take off the mouse guards. It's a hassle to take them off and then staple them back on again. So that's why I. Last year I did it differently, but this year I said ah, I'm going to figure out how to keep the keep the mouse guards on. Gla my glasses. Um. Yeah. Oh, I think it's a little... <laughs> Let's get a close-up. <laughs> That's good. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, put some foam in there. How long are you going to leave the socks on, or does it matter? At least 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. But you know, sometimes I'll do the whole, whole yard and not even take them off. Yeah, there's really no reason there's to. There's no reason to. Yeah. First, I didn't have four caps, and Larry said, You're, "You'll want four. And I went, "No, no." And then Larry he was right. Said you, Larry said, "You won't want four." He'll, he said, "You'll want four caps." Oh yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, he's right." <laughs> yeah. So we've been using the Oxavap um, ProVap 110. I really like the product. It's a great, it's a great, uh, a great tool for doing this. Also, Larry, uh, the one thing I really like is Larry provides great uh, technical support. I had trouble with it; broke down last year uh, at one point, and he quickly sent parts and then actually sent me a whole new one too, and no questions asked. And uh, so he, it's really great for that. I think it's worth it. It works very well, and he he just provides great technical support for it you will notice on these things if you, when you buy there's th three or four different brands and different knockoffs that people are making one important thing to know about them it's on the tube that comes out of the cup on this one the tube comes out of the bottom and it has this piece down here and the reason it's built like that is that when you when you stick it in the entrance the uh, the plate here rests on the on the landing board on the beehive and that's pretty important i'll show you why uh, when i first used it i uh, come over here i'll show you i drill these holes in the side and and shot it in from the side and you'll see various videos where you'll see people shooting it in the side or in the back um, if you're going to do that you want one of the ones that has the pipe that comes out of the top up here at the top not at the bottom what happens is if you use this one like that and you stick it in there, uh, it has no support. And so what happen happened to me, it worked fine for a couple of months and then I noticed it started to sag because it had no support and, and this pipe actually ended up bending and snapping off. The ones that the pipe comes out of the top up here, that doesn't happen because when you stick it in, this part of the thing will rest on the side of the, of the beehive and so, that's what you want. You want one of the ones that the pipe comes out the top 
if you're going to drill a hole in the in the front or the back or the side. Otherwise, when you're cramming it in the side or something, did you find that you were clogging up the hole sometimes? Um, propolis or what? I had a little a little tool, just a little like a little bolt or a nail that was about the size of that hole, and so I'd go around and I would actually clean out each hole mm -hmm. on them before I did that. So as long as I did that, I didn't have any problem. Uh, but that's a pretty critical point. Uh, this one is really made to to use on a um, landing board on the front of the hive, not on the mm -hmm. not on the side or the back. He sent me a, a whole new unit last year, a whole entire new. The other one malfunctioned. He sent a whole new one and yeah. didn't charge me anything. He's pretty good. You know, we carry his products in our store, and uh, he's very easy to do business with. Yep, excellent guy. Okay, so so we did this treatment. Um, and then I noticed in your video and from talking to you, you said last year that you treated three times with the oxalic in December. Uh, you felt like it just almost wiped the mites out. And then I think you were saying that you hardly saw a mite until June. Is that correct? Well, in that uh, test yard that we showed in that one video, we couldn't find a mite in there. And it worked really well. Is that true all across your operation? Yeah, we were really clean, really, really clean. Of course, they came along eventually. Then, because of that, did you skip all spring treatments? Yes. You felt like you had so completely wiped out the yeah. mites that you didn't have to do any spring treatments at all. Yeah, it worked fine. Yeah. That's that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty useful yeah. thing to know and and that you didn't have to do that at all. And then once you got to say August. Were your mite levels still overall think, lower than they would have been? I think so. We were seeing fives and just, you know, not nothing extreme in any of the washes except for that one uh, yard that we used for the study with UGA. And we, Seth, actually found out the source of the mite bomb here just a few weeks ago. His dad told him about a bee yard. The man had died, had 10 colonies, probably, what, Seth, two-thirds of a mile from our yard? Couldn't have been more than that, that yeah. And uh, uh, they had offered Seth the hives. And as far as they knew, they were alive in the winter. But this summer, there was a lot of activity. They thought they were still alive. Seth went to pick up what he thought was going to be some live beehives, and they were all dead getting robbed out. From our bees, probably. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, you know, I can't blame the man. I mean, gee whiz, he died and wasn't able to take care of his bees. So uh, just one of those things that happens. But uh, I would guess that's probably what bombed us there, why we came up with such extreme, and I mean, they were extreme numbers hmm. in August there at that Clayton yard. At August. So but the rest of the yards were lower and more normal. Right. Well, that would seem to suggest that, you know, you, you're getting six or seven months of benefit out of treating time, yeah. what you did in December by getting the mites to near zero. As long as we don't have somebody else around us that's got a bunch of mites. And that is a problem for me here because we are, it's a wonderful place to live and a wonderful place to keep bees, but we have a large, large number of hobby beekeepers and probably um, a significant number of them are non-treaters. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, sometimes they pr probably do that in such ways that they aren't sources of mite bombs, but a lot of times they are. Yeah, I kind of And so that. I have that bat. We have, uh, in fact, our, um, our president uh, of our bee club did a map one night and showed us at a bee club. He took, the, he took the membership list of our county bee organization and he had a computer program and he took the addresses of all the people in our, in our bee club and he, he superimposed it on the map of the county that we live. And he, he showed it at the bee meeting and there was sort of a gasp in the room like, really, do we have that <laughs> many beekeepers? And there were, you know, a couple hundred dots over our county. So in Buncombe County. In a county, you know, if you're a beekeeper in a county with very few beekeepers, then you really have a certain advantage in terms yeah. of the whole mite bomb issue. Um, well, and, most of our yards are pretty safe. We don't have, well, we're nothing like what you just described. We have a few beekeepers, and I know where many of them are, and 
of course, a lot of our yards are up hollows, hollers, they call mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. there. And so we're pretty isolated, but we have a few that are, you know, exposed to mm -hmm. other beekeepers that have yards with 20 or 30 colonies in a yard. And of course, there's always the ones that you have no clue that they're there. Sure, completely sure. Completely hidden and unknown. But, and that's what turned out to be this deal. We didn't know, I didn't know those bees were there. If I moved even one or two counties over, there would be very few beekeepers, but here there's yeah. a, a very large number. So I have to at least think about that in terms of my treatment program and the frequency of treatments. I definitely have to consider that, you know. Well, Asheville is a unique community. You have a lot of uh, nature or naturalist-minded people, which is, you know, commendable. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that want to have a few colonies in the backyard. Yes. And want to go no treatment, and yes. maybe they still have a few things to learn about that. Yes. And, you know, and you can go no treatment, or can go no treatment. You just got to be smart and intelligent and knowledgeable. I, I always recommend that brand new beekeepers go the treatment route and if you're going to go no treatment get a few years under your belt when mm -hmm. you know what you're doing and know the mechanical devices that you you know you can use to mm -hmm. like drone trapping and whatever yes but uh, yeah it can be a real problem and then i tell people too you know of all the effective mite treatments that we now have available to us all but one of them are are certified organic natural treatments yes, so you true. can treat and still use organic and natural treatments. The amitraz based treatment is the only one, the only effective treatment that, that is not organic. The other five or six are considered to be organic treatments everywhere they're used in the world. So, yeah. uh, you know, to me, if you're gonna choose, you know, to be more natural, use those treatments. There, There's five or six that are available that uh, you can use, including what we did today, the oxalic acid. Yeah, just just go on Amazon and type in, 10 pounds of oxalic acid and that pops right up and my wife has the prime so it's no shipping <laughs> okay now i asked you about are you willing to show us how you make pollen packs yeah let's go do that okay, that sounds great, great. thank you